more round, a lot easier to handle, but a lot of people have a love-hate relationship with these. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a wonderful day. It is Wednesday, September 13th here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we're gonna check on some of our fall transplants in the greenhouse here. Talk about how we know when those are ready to go in the ground. And we're also gonna get another tray started. Gonna get some lettuce planted today. But before we do that, we need to say goodbye to something that's been an integral part of Lazy Dog Farm over the last few years. Old Yeller here, my trusty camera, finally bit the dust. This Canon M50 is a great little camera for kind of running, gun, shooting for YouTube and stuff like that. And this one has shot probably close to 2,000 videos. So I've had it for a while. It's been a good one, but it's time to retire. It won't even turn on anymore. It's time to get a new one. Thankfully, I had a backup. I've got a nice Panasonic camera that I use for a lot of my marketing clients. That's what we used on the last video. It does okay. It's really good for photography and video if you're standing still, but if you're moving around a lot, it doesn't do as well. So I purchased a Sony camera. That's what we're shooting on now. Still getting used to it, so just bear with me a little bit. For some reason, I can't see the screen on it if I've got these sunglasses on. So I have to do this every now and then to make sure I'm standing in the right spot. I don't know what's going on with that. I can't take the sunglasses off because it hurts my eyes. I'm so used to wearing them. But anyway, bear with me. We'll get through it. We'll get used to this new camera. And in just a few videos, everything will be back to normal. So let's go inside the greenhouse and see what's going on here. We've got the ducks moseying around out there doing a little morning grazing. We've got our cool season transplants right here trying out this bootstrap farmer tray compared to this prop tech tray we'll address that in a minute our transplants are looking pretty good they've taken off in the last week or so been giving them that daily dose of agar thrive from that bucket right there and i think maybe in another week week and a half these might be ready to go in the ground got another tray right here ready to plant we're going to plant that in a little bit but first i want to show you this massive daddle pepper plant that we've got growing in the greenhouse here my buddy mark gave me this plant several months ago it was just a tiny little baby when he gave it to me we've been feeding it well here in the greenhouse and as you can see it is nice big and bushy problem is we're not getting hardly any peppers off of it i don't know if you can see into there but there's maybe three or four little daddle peppers on it it's got blooms everywhere but it's almost like it's dropping blooms plant looks healthy just not getting a lot of production out of it so if any of you out there grow daddle peppers regularly let me know if you've ever seen this with this particular variety so now back over here to our fall transplants and assessing this tray versus the tray we've been using for many years now as i told you before the germination was a little spotty in this tray because we were using a lot of older seeds whereas we we're using mostly new seeds in this tray so we can't blame the germination on the tray probably has a lot to do with the seeds we used in each tray i like this bootstrap farmer tray so far everything in it seems to be doing really really well i can't say that the transplants in this tray are doing any better than the ones in this prop tech tray here they look about the same to me but if you don't have space for these larger prop tech trays i would say these right here these 10 20 bootstrap farmer trays would be a good investment so don't think they're any better than the prop tech but they seem to be growing some nice transplants now one of the questions we frequently get when we show transplants growing in these type of trays is how do you get them out of the trays a lot of people claim they have difficulty getting the transplants out of the cells in these type of trays and to that i say if you have trouble getting them out of there they don't need to come out of there yet now with the exception of beets which can have kind of a delicate stem there everything else should pull right out of these cells when they're ready so when these transplants are ready and these aren't ready yet i can look at them and tell but when they are ready you should be able to just grab that stem there and pull it right out of that cell if you pull on that stem and it breaks off it's not ready so 
don't try to take them out of here until you can pull them out that's going to be your telltale sign that they have a nice little root ball there and they're ready to go on the ground now both the prop tech and the bootstrap farmer trays have holes in the bottom of each cell the prop tech tray has smaller holes than the bootstrap tray there so if they're being a little stubborn you can take a pencil or a pen or a stick or something and help kind of nudge them out but like i said earlier when they're ready they should pull out of these cells pretty easily just by pulling on the stem a little bit there they will pull out better if this seed starting mix here is a little dry so the morning of the day of transplanting don't water them that morning let them dry out just a hair and they'll pull out a lot better so we got all those transplants which should be ready to go in the ground pretty soon most of those are brassicas cabbage collards kale broccoli cauliflower all that good stuff but we do have some other stuff we need to get started today and pretty soon so we can have it ready when we need to put it in the ground so we're going to get some lettuce started today i waited a little while to get my lettuce started because sometimes lettuce doesn't germinate that well if it's still warm outside it's still been 92 93 degrees earlier this week now it's finally starting to cool off a little bit we also need to get our onions started pretty soon we'll probably do that on one of the next couple videos and just as a side note for those of you that live in the south uh oh that grow short day onions we have added some of our favorite short day onion varieties to our website at lazydogfarm.com so you can go pick up some of those seeds if you want to try some of those varieties in addition to the lettuce and the onions i'm also going to start one more round of brassicas probably some more cabbage broccoli and cauliflower we'll probably do that after we get the lettuce and the onions done over this next week so I've got four different varieties of head lettuce here that we'll be planting in one of those prop tech trays. And these things usually germinate and grow out pretty fast. A lot of times we can have a viable lettuce transplant in just say three, three and a half to four weeks, especially if we feed them well. So we much prefer head lettuce around here as opposed to leaf lettuce. If you're growing leaf lettuce or cut and come again type lettuce, a lot of times you can just direct seed that in your container, your raised bed, or your in-ground garden. But this head lettuce here does a lot better from my experiences when we transplant it into the garden as opposed to direct seeding it. So we go through quite a bit of lettuce around here, especially during the cooler months. A lot of times I'll harvest two to three heads at a time. And the great thing about growing lettuce during the cooler months is you don't have to worry about it bolting or going to seed near as much. It holds well in the soil. So you don't have to cut it all at one time. You can just cut two or three heads as you need them, leave the rest out there to grow, and eventually kind of work your way through it all. Now I really like planting these pelleted lettuce seeds. So these are lettuce seeds that are coated in clay to make them a little larger more round a lot easier to handle but a lot of people have a love hate relationship with these pelleted seeds so the pelleted seeds are easier to handle easier to singulate when you're putting them in the individual cells in those trays that's the main reason we like them so much but there are several reasons why people don't like these pelleted seeds one these are more expensive than raw lettuce seeds so you'll pay more for the pelleted seeds two they really need overhead water to germinate well if you're a bottom watering type of person these things are going to take forever to germinate they might not ever germinate for you you got to be flushing the top of the cells with water to wash the clay off that little pellet there to get these seeds to germinate works fine for what we do because we only top water but if you're bottom watering you might not want to go with the pelleted seeds the third reason a lot of people don't like them is because they don't really store well from one year to the next so I always try to use all these pelleted lettuce seeds and get new ones the following year they tend to fall off a good bit as far as germination rate from one year to the next so we've got four varieties here that we'll be planting today. We've grown all these varieties in the past. Really good proven varieties for us. We've got this Adriana Butterhead Lettuce. Just some nice, silky, smooth, delicious lettuce. We've got this one that we grew for the first time last year. This is an oak leaf variety called Bauer. Really liked it. 
We've got this Cherokee red lettuce, which is a nice heat tolerant lettuce. It will hold well even if we get some random 80 degree days during the middle of winter, which we can get down here. And then the romaine variety we really like is called Sparks. So we've got our prop tech tray ready to go here. I've already pre-moistened the pro mix that we put inside here. Did that earlier this morning. Just need to make some little dibbles here in each cell where our seeds are gonna sit. Then we'll get our labels in place here. I think I'll just do an equal amount of all four varieties. I'm gonna go ahead and plant this entire tray here. We won't need nowhere near this much lettuce but like i said i don't like to carry over these pelleted seeds from one year to the next and lettuce transplants are usually pretty easy to give away so we'll be able to get rid of them and we'll start dropping our seeds here all we need is one seed per cell with these they usually germinate pretty well and we'll just keep going until we get all four varieties planted all right, so we got a seed in each cell. Now you'll hear some people say that you're not supposed to cover lettuce seeds. They need light to germinate. But for these head lettuce seeds, especially these pelleted ones here, we always cover them and we always get good germination. If you're planting leaf lettuce, raw seed, something like that, yeah, you may not need to cover them, but we like to cover these. So we're gonna take some good old Go Dogs perlite here. This is the best kind of perlite you can buy. And we're just gonna lightly cover our seeds over this entire tray. So you can see there we've got all our seeds sufficiently covered with perlite. We want to make sure we get the seeds covered but we don't want to add so much perlite that we can't see the divisions between these cells. So you want to add enough but not too much. So it's good to get that knocked out this morning before it gets too hot in that greenhouse. I've got the sides rolled all the way up and the door wide open so it's as cool as I can get it in there without adding an AC. So now that we've got the lettuce done, hopefully we can get our onions started on one of our next couple videos, maybe later this week. And we'll talk about why we think it's so important to grow your own onion transplants. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to check out our affiliate links and coupon codes in the description below. Also go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com. You can find some of those great short day onion varieties. And if you wanna see some of these lettuce varieties we planted today at peak maturity when we're harvesting some of them check out this video right here from last year we'll show you some of those beautiful lettuce varieties that we like to grow so check that out and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm